Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our special meeting for uh, January 27, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Ms. Berner, uh, good evening. If you would call the roll, Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Vi Vice Mayor. Me, Vice me, Sorry. I'm here. <laughs> Councilman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Rodwell. Here. And Councilman Lindsay. Here. Five members. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Graham. Father, we thank you for this wonderful city that we live in. Thank you for all the great friends and neighbors that you've blessed us with. We ask that you be with this council as we make decisions affecting the city, help us make the correct decisions to benefit the city and our residents. We ask you to be with our, our deputies and our firefighters, that they will be safe and be able to return home to their families. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty. So, uh, action on the minutes, none tonight. Communications. Under communications, we will be doing the interview for the applicants for the two vacant council seats. And what we've done for some of you, I don't know if you've done this before, I've seen it on the YouTube channels. Uh, we'll do the interviews in public, uh, just, you know, because you guys would, if you were to be appointed, you would be representing the audience members in the city as well. So we'll do those right here one at a time. So uh, I just was going to do them in alphabetical order, if that was okay with uh, council uh, from the first name. So let me pull these back up. I know, I'm just getting to that file. <laughs> so just checking. All right, so uh, Ms. Plant, if you need, you can stay there if you want, or you can come up here. It doesn't matter to me, <laughs> if council's okay with that. Yeah. Let's bring them all up here because okay. we got some in the back row. Okay. If that's okay, I mean. Yeah, that's one. Mm -hmm. Most yeah. definitely. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Wright. So uh, what we usually do is we just start random. We'll just let each council member start at random for each uh, candidate. So uh, does anybody want to go first? Any questions or comments or feedback from his plans? If not, I will. Go ahead. You're the mayor. You go ahead. All right. So. Um, Thank you for uh, applying. I appreciate that. We appreciate that. Um, just if you don't mind, just give me a little bit of uh, reason. I mean, I've got your hat, but why? Why you think now is a good time for you to be on city council? Um, I'm done with school now, so I can have more time to focus. My kids are a little older, so I have more time to focus on what's going on in the city and just being more involved with the community. Okay. What? What? do you envision this job to be? Um, it's uh, going to be a lot, which is fine, because I'm a nurse right now, so I can do it. Um, I'm very multi-task oriented, so I can do that. Um, but um, just helping build the city better and get better. Where do you see you for the last five years from now? Um, hopefully with all the empty buildings being filled with businesses and just thriving. Uh, again, thank you for uh, the application and for preparing for us tonight. Uh, what is your, uh, what's the most important thing that you would want to accomplish if you was appointed to council? Um, to you, important thing to you. Well, I have four kids, so just keeping the crime rate down and watching out for our kids. And, well, I, mean, <laughs> I was looking at the deputy. I to be able to do it myself. <laughs> right. Just, yeah. Okay, thank you. Here we go. Um, how long have you been a resident of New Carlisle? Okay, so you've seen you've seen us in our in our worst, and, and as we've continued to improve over the last and four years. I was in high school. I lived here too, so. Okay. But for sure, it's my house I'm at now for 19 years. So. Oh, wow. 
awesome for 19 years. Yep. <laughs> right, anything else? Anyone? Yeah. All right, well, thank you very much. Just you can have a seat and we'll continue on. All right, so next would be Ben. Ben, how do you say your last name? Because I didn't want to twist it up. Bon. Uh, bon. Bon? Bon. Okay. It, it's been said lots of different ways. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's why I just said Ben. It's no fancy. <laughs> All right, well, thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day to come and uh, talk with us. Uh, let someone else start off. Anyone? Is Mr. Grimm going to go? No, I'm, no, I'm looking for his application. Oh. Uh, I'll ask you the same question as uh, I did uh, Amanda. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the, uh, what is the uh, one most important thing you think the city to do, needs to do or you would like to s accomplish if you're appointed to council? Personally, I just think it's important for local city governments to be able to stand between their citizens and a federal or state government needed um, because there is that provision in our Constitution um, to be able to safeguard their freedoms and their liberties that we have today. So that would be um, probably the, the one thing that I hope to accomplish is if need be. Okay, thank you. Mr. Rodwell, you want to go next? Mm. So I can go. Yes, give me a minute. So same question. Uh, I mean what 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 interests you in wanting to apply for this? I mean what what's the drive behind it? Um just you know, wanting to serve my community. I obviously you know my application is you know, right. vested interest in both a business in the city as well as I live in the city. Um with raising a family here. So just to be able to try and use my gifts and abilities to serve the community and what we think is a lot of continue to be a good place to do business in the years, years to come. I got one more if you don't mind since you sure. mentioned it. So you got you have you own um Smalls and Crows, correct? Mm -hmm. How long have you guys been there now? It's been what, we've ten been, years? We've been in business, this will be our sixteenth year. Okay. We've been um, up there uh, for 14 years. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. I've had dealings with Ben for years. So I, I pretty, that doesn't disqualify me. I'm mean, one of his customers, does it? <laughs> okay. Oh, not. I, I say, <laughs> that's a disqualification. It's going to be tough to find somebody. Yeah, you we can't get anybody. Yes. Yeah. So. Okay. But I didn't know we had houses on New Colonial Pike in the city. Mm -hmm. You have one. Yeah. One. Yeah. You're it. His. Lucky you, huh? Yeah. yeah right. okay. <laughs> no, I had no questions. All right. Ms. Nowakowski? What would, what main improvement would you like to see in the city? Uh, well, I guess in, in what regard? Something that is, you think is of concern to the citizens and yourself? Um, probably the first, just at you the know, top of my list, is probably, they kind of go hand in hand, is just uh, probably crime and, and drug use, just being able to figure out what we can do to um, you know, help, obviously, the Sheriff's Department, but, uh, as a community, what we can do to, to try and reduce both of those. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nowakowski. Mr. Rigwell? I want to piggyback off of Linda's uh, question. Um, when you say drug use and crime, um, you know, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, but the, the, the crime in Nicola is not that bad compared to other local cities. Um, you know, I mean, you're gonna have crime anywhere, no matter what you do, you can have police forces on every corner. Um, <clears throat> do you, how do you feel, um, you know, I mean, 
you, you say you reduce it. What, what, in what ways? I mean, I see that you you serve on, on the board of your church, so you're obviously involved with a lot of the local community. Uh, you're you're a vice, what, vice chair and chairman. Of the board. Fairly impressive. Um, so, but I mean, what do you see? Is it is it single home families? Is it too much downtime for parents and kids? I mean, what is as far as just you know the drug use that we you know well I mean, if you want to talk drug use uh, I'm talking or, in particular in this city in this I mean you in know because yeah. I mean it's going to be it, it's because um, Chief Trusty will tell you I mean our, our his his calls for for uh, drug overdoses have has dropped dramatically over the That's last great. year. Um, Narcan is, you know, we're actually sending Narcan back because we're just not using it before the expiration date. That's so, great. Um, I mean, I think that goes to to our, our police force and our citizens passing the levy to have us have a, a strong police force. Um, my question is, what what else could we do to build on upon that? Do you think? Um, you know, I, I think a lot goes back to just figuring out what you can do to strengthen families. Okay. I think. Uh, a lot of our issues, uh, society, society, uh, societally, <coughs> that's not even the right friend. I know what you're trying to say. Right there with you. <laughs> uh, go back to, I think, the breakdown of families. So, you know, what we can do as a community to try and uh, help our families. So, more city outreach, so more city outreach, getting. Just, you know, we have little league, local little league, just keeping that stuff going. There's uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, a lot of things coming. Anything else? You good, Mr. Ogle? Yes, sir. Anyone else? Anything else? All right, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. And then moving on to uh, Bill Cook. Sir. Uh, Eddie Blasco is William. <laughs> What's that? Eddie Blasco is William. <laughs> I know. I have it down as B. Oh, okay. So, all right. Good evening, sir. Nice to see you again. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Um, it's been a regular home for a while. <laughs> Help yourself. Uh, you want to start, Mr. Gunn? I have no questions of him. All right. Uh, Mr. Rebel? I, I, you know, I truly have none for Bill. I mean, I've served with Bill for the last year, so. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I will say on a personal note, I've gotten to know him over the last year, and my, uh, my thoughts of him prior to being on council to now is, is vastly different than uh, what, what I had. Mm -hmm. I, so I apologize for uh, stereotyping you before I got on council. I have no question to um, uh, Just a couple of comments, really, Mr. Cook. I mean, this is, if, if you were to be appointed, uh, what, this would be like your third time in your lifespan being on council because you were the mayor back in, what, <laughs> 80s? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, well, just for just for the audience, I mean, what do you want to get back up here for? Primarily, over the past two years, I think this city has made great strides. In fact, with the additions of several new council members, the fact that we have worked rather diligently and expeditiously with the administration. We've got a bank account that probably neighbors six million dollars. This goes a long way from the hundred and twenty-five dollar bank account that I remember back. We also have improved a lot of things in this city. Number one, the tearing down of the school, the old water tower that's come down. The fact that we now have a four hundred thousand <coughs> grant for a new shelter house that's going to help us. The fact that we're getting more streets done. However, I would like to see a lot more enforcement out of some of our, I guess the word is planning department, as far as the neighborhoods. We have a lot of businesses that are operating in residential areas. We have a lot of trash sitting out. 
there were very few uh, sidewalks clean over the past couple of so. <coughs> Making the tour of the town, we've had trash cans still sitting out. I think the ordinance reads a day before and the day after. I would like to see much additional communication between city administration and council. Awesome. Thank you very much. Good answer. Anyone else? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. Appreciate it as always, sir. Next, Ms. Eggleston. <coughs> Good evening, ma'am. How are you? Likewise. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for applying and thank you for taking the time to join us this evening. Um, I'll just kind of, I'll start off on this one if it's okay. Um, I'll just kind of ask you the same question. I mean, obviously you just left council seat. Um, why do you want to come back? two, three years, well, two years, the communication between council members and the administration has improved vastly, and I want to see that continue. I think we've gotten more accomplished as a council, being able to communicate and not having to deal with individual agendas. I'd rather like to see that continue. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Green? I've worked with her for a couple of years. I pretty much know about her. I've known her all her life. <laughs> <laughs> it makes her desire to take it. All right. Anything, Mr. Orwell? I, I mean, I, I should ask Mr. Cook this as well. Did we ever get clarified? I mean, I know you guys petition to be on the ballot for November. Did we ever get clarification from the Board of Elections as to why uh, your application was denied? Or Mine, I made an error on the back of two of my petitions. And when I turned them in, I asked them, he was looking them over, and I asked him to make sure that I did everything right. <laughs> and he assured me that I had. And Okay. Good. Yep. Mr. Lindsay, anything? Uh, I have no questions for Ms. Eggleston now. No one else? All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. Appreciate it. All right. Next, Ms. <coughs> Grable. Please. Good evening. Who? Samantha Grable, if I'm saying that right. Uh, I missed that application. Very good. You was? She was the that. first one. You, do you have hers? I don't have it with me. No? Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't have it. I'm sure. Let me look at it real quick. So, <coughs> let's see. And then there's that. I'll let you read over that. And then I'll, uh, so thank you for coming. We appreciate it. Um, we'll, uh, I start the last. So, Mr. Robo, I'll let you start on this one first. Please, I'm mm -hmm. trying to find your resume. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Right. Grimm. Samantha, you have attended a number of council meetings. And you said you have issues hearing some of the council members and some of the audience. You said that if you can't see them, you can't hear them. You think you would be able to hear not facing the council? Right now, I can barely see Mr. Lindsay. Thank you. Disability isn't a reason to exclude someone or <coughs> something. But I actually think I, I bring, I can bring, um, I'm in Morty View to this council that is, I feel, neglected at this point. I, with technology, I do very well. Unless I state that I'm hearing impaired or deaf, most people in the community would have no clue. Um, I, I teach sign languages at the library. Um, and I walk into my class, and before people get there, I make sure I speak to every single person. Because I speak, like everyone else here, okay? <clears throat> and when I say I'm deaf, then no, I spoke to you. Because it's hard for them to understand and break down stereotypes, just like it is for everyone else. It's hard for children to do it because they are used to mainstream media, okay? 
you know what? My phone will pick up everybody's, every single person's voice here if we use it properly with my the equipment that I have. Okay. Okay. So me being disabled and having being deaf, that is not a, dis a disability that this council should take into account for anything. It's it's just who I am, and it, you know it, it makes me more aware of others and what other people and diversities that they um, are up against as well. well. I just wanted to make sure we'd not interfere with uh, your mm -hmm. ability to to conduct business here. Mm -hmm. no, no, I'm not, I mm -hmm. meant no offense. Okay. Okay. I, I, I am always open to talk about my disability with anyone. I think that by talking about it, um, it opens up other people's views and, and their understanding of what deaf people are like. Um, I didn't grow up in a, in a deaf culture. Um, I didn't go deaf until I was in my 30s. Um, I woke up one day with a paralyzed vocal cord and for three years, I had no voice. Um, the doctors gave me steroids to get my voice back, and one of the very rare side effects of steroid use is permanent hearing loss. By the time they realize it, it's too late. So that's how I lost my hearing, and that's why I speak normal, if there's such thing as normal in society. Um, but, so I, I think I, I represent the minorities. So that's how I look at things. And, I, I like to speak up for those people who are afraid or just um, can't speak up for themselves because they have no voice. So, and I think those are the people that I would be um, representing. And, and it's a diverse, we, we, we have a very diverse city here, you know? I mean, it's, we have a lot of Caucasian Americans, and we have a lot of Mexican Americans. And, you know, I think everybody as a whole needs to be represented. And I, I'm not Mexican American, and I don't claim to be. Um, but I think I understand what it's like being a minority. And so I think I can represent people in that minority. You said, I don't remember the term you used, you felt left out. How do you feel? Say again. You, I don't remember the exact term you used, but you felt left out, ignored. I feel ignored? Yes. I, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of minorities <coughs> feel ignored and left out and um, left behind. And um, the funny thing is, is when I, I went to college and I took sign language in college and that's how I learned to sign. And my teacher used to tell me I was the worst sign that there was. Well, I lost my voice in my very last sign semester. Okay, my last sign classes, I lost my voice. And my teacher, she said, I don't know how you went from the worst sign in the class to the best sign in the class. We you know what it was. But then when I, I, I was forced to use facial expression. Before then, I thought it looked goofy. And I thought, I am not going to look goofy. But you know what? What I've learned in life is sometimes it's okay to be goofy. It's okay to stand up there and, and say, you know what, this is who I am. Like it or not, this is who I am, and this is what I represent. And I am very well grounded in who I am and what I represent. And I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. So. Thank you. Good. Mm -hmm. right. You want to go next? Thank you for doing your application, although I missed it and did not print it out, and I apologize, so I read, just read it. Uh, the question I have is the same I asked the other ones. What would you like to see accomplished if you were seated on council? Well, I, I would like to see the tax base increase, okay? Mm. I'd like to see tax base increase, <laughs> but... <laughs> I would like to not get it from directly increasing from the taxpayers taxes. by increasing the one and a half percent. I would like to increase the tax base by increasing what we do in this community. So, I, uh, you know, I, my, my late husband, I've been widowed for 15 years, and my late husband was an assistant city manager. So I come with a lot of experience from him. You know, um, 
I, I understand the CDBG. I understand, you know, a lot about what councilmen do on an everyday basis. I understand that, you know, those people who pound your email are not necessarily the majority, but just the noisy minority with a voice, okay? But I believe that they need treated with empathy. And they need, they need to be explain things to, you know, in a courteous way. And I think that's one of the things I bring to the plate. You know, I, I remember one time when my husband was at work, somebody chose a resident, chose to call our personal home and complain about the city. Well, the phone was in my name, and it was in my name for a reason, because it wasn't his phone, it was my phone. And so I answered the phone, and where we lived, there was an airport. And this person complained because they worked third shift, and they slept first shift, and the airport created noise. And I simply said to them, how long have you lived in your house? And he goes, well, eight years. I said, was the airport there before you moved in? Well, yes. Did you expect the airport to roll up and move because you moved and bought your home? Well, no, I said, okay, do you understand what you're talking about now? The airport's still doing business. Just because you choose to work their shift, you need to buy some earplugs. You know what? The guy goes, no, nobody's ever explained it to me that way. And he goes, they always want to sugarcoat everything and push it under the rug. I'm like, <clears throat> Not really walk out. I can't shoot it. <laughs> and you know what? If you just explain the things to people, you know what? I think they understand. People are more intelligent than people that have been credit for. Okay, thank you. Um, I'll go next if you don't mind, Mr. Rogo. No, sir. All right. Uh, same question, really. I mean, you kind of hit on it with Dale a little bit. Just, I mean, uh, and thank you again for the application. Uh, what's your drive behind? I mean, like, what's your drive? Why would you like to be on council? What's some of the things that, that interest you so much that you would want to join? One, I don't think everybody in this town is represented fairly in here, okay? And Bonnie says, be the change you want to see in the world. And I am that change. I am that person who is willing to step up and say, you know what? I don't think this is right. Mm -hmm. I want to change things. I want things to be equal for all, not just, you know, allow the allow minority or not allow the majority. We need, we need fairness. We need diversity. We need to recognize everyone in a fair, just, and nice way. Like me. Thank you. Uh, let's see, Mr. Rodwell or Ms. Snow? I just, I mean, I've, I've had this question for years. What is the High Class Hooker Society? I was going to ask that right in there. What's, what is High Class Hookers? What is High Class Hookers? Yes. Um, I see it all the time on Facebook. I'm like, what is this for? Okay, so High Class Hookers, we appreciate the homeless. Last year, we put out 350 hats for the homeless and needy in our community. And what we do stays right here in Clark County. Okay. Not only did we put out 350 hats, but we also put out 13 sleeping mats. A sleeping mat takes approximately 200 hours to put one hour out. And we did 13 hours, along with the 350 hats. We're not a nonprofit. We operate as a nonprofit, but we're not a nonprofit. We will open our books to anyone for anybody to inspect. We don't care. We have no hidden secrets, no hidden agendas or anything. Um, we, we really work to help the needy and homeless in our community. You notice those people who didn't know what's around. Um, so we, you know what, we, I believe that, I, I started the high class servers, okay, and yeah, you know what I call it that? It's a marketing thing. When I called it the crochet club, nobody wanted to be a part of it. <laughs> <laughs> you give it a wacky name and everybody wants to be part of it. So, you know, it's the thing. Oh my gosh, I'm a high class hooker. And you, you know, it's, it's really fun. Mm -hmm. You walk up to a pastor, because I, I partner with pastors a lot, to get our, you know, our product out to where it goes. And I, 
and they go, well, I'm Pastor so-and-so. I say, guys, I'm Sam, I'm a hooker. And they look at me, <laughs> you know, I know you preach in that pulpit not to judge. And you're not, you're not listening to yourself. <laughs> and then they look at me, and I said, I appreciate for the homies. And he goes, oh, my gosh. And he, you know, it's that taking back thing. But you know what? It's as long as you're doing what's right. Never be oh, no. So, I have no problem saying, I'm a hooker. I appreciate the promise. So, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. I started it. I founded it. I'm president of the Hookers, and um, we just find good things. We, we help people in our community. Mm -hmm. so, You're in the know. I'm yeah, in the know now. <laughs> and you, you can't come and volunteer if you'd like. We will teach you to crochet. Yeah, I want to see that. But yeah, I want to see well, that. I, mean, I mean, how do you, I mean, because I've seen, I've seen, I mean, in Springfield, I see, do, is it the ones with the paper bag, or the, the plastic bags, or is it actual crochet? So the mats, yes. the mats are made with the, um, like, Walmart program. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, the, what they do is they get, they create a barrier on the ground to get the homeless off the ground so they're not freezing cold or burning hot, okay? And when, there's, when that surface is wet, it keeps them dry. So when, when let's say, for example, they're over in Springfield in a mm -hmm. tent city, mm -hmm. okay? Yep, just was by one day. They don't have to use as many blankets because they're not subjected to that coldness of the ground. So by lifting them off that ground, um, they can conserve a few more blankets and use them for other things and, and spread them out. So. Thank you. You've answered a long time question. Good sir. Yes, sir. Did you have something else? I just wanted to ask you if, whether you're appointed or not tonight. I'd like to speak with you after our meeting's over about your projects. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Nokowski, did you have anything? Do you have any particular aspect of the city that you would like to see improved? And I know this is one of those one things that nobody wants to talk about. It's that, you know, thing. So, you know, one of the things that people always come here and talk about is the roads need to be repaired. Yeah. And every time I hear, we have a 20 year road plan. I don't know if 20 years is good enough. I'd like to see it better. I would. I would like to see it better. But you can't just say, we need to make it better. You know what? You have to find a resolution to make it better. You have to find a plan. You have to come together. You have to work together and create that. You have to have the money to make it happen. Um, so it's not just saying, let's just do it. It doesn't happen that way. I know that. But I think a lot of residents would be happier if the roads were repaired more, you know, more frequently. Okay? Um, but we, well, we would have to find a resolution for that. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah, it may not happen in a year or two. But I, I think in a respectable yeah. amount of time, it, it could be resolved. And, but in order to do that, you're going to have to create that bigger tax base for all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, you, are you good, Mr. Dunkowski? No, I said thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Dunkowski. Yeah. How would you increase that tax base? Well, how would I increase tax base? Well, one, you have to um, generate business, and you have to um, you have to entice manufacturing of some sort. And I know small cities hate that. Oh, we don't want to be anything more than just a small town. But you know what? I think I think unless we increase tax taxes on our residents, we don't have options. I, I think increasing taxes on residents. Is ridiculous. Our our economy is is blundering right now, and it's you know we it's it just keeps everything the cost of everything is going up, and for that we can't increase our taxes too. So the only way to do it is to create business and manufacturing. And so somehow that has to happen. And um, I, I, um, I have a lot of 
friends who have been city managers or who have been council in the market cities um, with a lot of experience. And, and I could call on them and say, hey, you know, how do you, how do you entice this? I, you know, I have a lot of friends who have had jobs in community development. How do you entice this? How do you make this happen? Share with me. Um, so it's, yeah. It's, it's about reaching out and, and, and pulling things in. <coughs> things can happen. Mm -hmm. Things happen. You good? I'm good. Thank you. Anyone else? Any mm -hmm. follow-ups? No, sir. All right. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. And Mr. Chris, finally. Mr. Chris, this is the last one. Um, just in case, actually, I, I don't know if I had mentioned this at the beginning. We did have a seventh member. Uh, Mr. Shamming, he backed out. You can sit down, Mr. Kress. Uh He backed out uh, for personal reasons, so he won't be here tonight. Good evening, Mr. Kress. How are you, sir? Good. All right. Thank you for taking the time to join us, as everyone else did. Um, does anybody want to start? I'll start. All right. Thank you for coming and doing the application of parent tonight. The uh, same question I've asked everybody else. What is your main objective? If you were selected for council, what would you like to see happen in the city? Uh, along with most everybody else, what I think is pretty much what they on the main topic is mm -hmm. we need more businesses here in town. Mm -hmm. We see all of them in Williams, that's no secret, uh, to have a business here in town, to entice people to bring their businesses to the city limits. We've got a lot of businesses just kind of dangle out from the outside of the limits, whether it be a neighborhood. Thank you. Mr. Graham, would you like to go? You said in here, as you say, it's sad to see the town not at its full potential. Correct. What would you do to help the city reach its full potential? <laughs> Good question. Um, I think it goes along with the businesses. I think we have some businesses that we've seen move places. We've had a couple outside of the city limits. Um, I think we go back to trying to entice those businesses to come here. Those businesses that are here, we need to do more reach, outreach with them to get them to be more involved in the community. Um, I, I know we have a few that do that, but not everybody really, uh, I think, goes above and beyond what they could. Some, whether it be financial, some whether it just be they don't want to. Um, but as a city, we need to find out why that engagement is not there. I'll go next, if you guys don't mind. Uh, same question. Uh, I mean, other than what you've already said, I mean, what's your what's the push that what makes you want to be up here? I mean, I think you kind of already answered it, but I'll just stick with the same sure. question. No, no, that's fair. What's the drive? Yeah, absolutely, that's fair. Um, most of you, I've talked to most of you outside of here, and I've talked to former council members that have been here before, and every time I've talked to most of them, I've had no less than at least four say, you should put in for this. Uh, and I never have. Decided that you know there's an opportunity, um, there's a void that needs to be filled. So I'm going to step up at this point and throw my hat in the ring, if you will. Uh, you know, we've lived here for man, ten years now. Ten years this June or something like that. Uh, but ten years this year, 2022, that we've lived here in town. Um, I grew up in a small town. Uh, that's the one more in Troy, just up the road. Um, so I kind of understand what small towns mean, and to me, they are the heart of America. We started with small towns. That's how we became the country that we are. Uh, so I think to be able to partake in that and to get the community more involved, um, I, I know some uh, organizations that aren't involved that I think could be involved more with the community. So uh, that'd be my Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Roybaldi, we're going next. Um, you said you were a uh, previous law enforcement officer. What, yes. what Where at? Uh, a couple different places. Uh, when I first got out of the police academy, I was at the same hospital as a special aid police officer down there, uh, which was interesting. interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Sure. But it's its own um, entertainment. Entertainment for most nights, yeah. Uh, uh, from there, I also worked in some small towns because the way the state law was working back then, working full time at the hospital, even though the PE did not hold our commissions with the state law. 
So at the same time, I had to volunteer at other local municipalities. The first one was Laura PD uh, until that police department went away. And then I moved on to Bradford PD. And from Bradford PD, I was still working at Good Sam full time. These were all free, what we call dollar a year cops. Um, and from there, I ended up getting a full time job to help my commission at Wright State. And that's where I spent the majority of my career at Wright State. Okay. Retired out of there as a sergeant. Oh, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rosal. Uh, Ms. Nowakowski. You suggested that we need to develop what kinds of things, how do you see that happening? As far as the technology as development? Or? That and the council. I mean, technology development, there's a wide range of things. I mean, throw a dart at the dartboard and there's something I think that we could be doing as a city. Uh, to give you some specifics, <clears throat> we have one festival a year, everybody knows that is a big secret. Why don't we have a second one? We have a Christmas parade that just doesn't quite do well. You know, we have a farmer's market that does okay. I've been there. I've talked to some vendors that have started there and have left there because they didn't get the business that they thought they would get. So I think there's room for improvement. Some of those that are already here, I think there's room for improvement to bring in newer uh, ventures for the businesses and things like that. As far as council goes, quite honestly, I see the same people up here a lot. And it's no offense to the people that are here because you stepped up. You did what those of us that have been in the tonight are trying to do, and that's be a part of the solution. The problem is, is we don't have enough people. What happens when we're all done? And then who's going to be here? Who's going to be the one to step up? This can't be back. Those of you that are on the board, at some point you're going to get tired of it, or you're just going to be term limited out. And then we have nobody to run this city. That's not going to be good. So, if you will, the term fresh blood, fresh faces, I think is very advantageous to the council. Thank you. All right, All right thank you, Mr. Chris. We appreciate You're your time, sir. Thank you. All right. Is that, Thanks. Huh? Is that the last one? Yeah, that'd be oh, the last good. one. So, you could only miss one. Man. What's that? I only missed one. Man. All right. All right, so uh, what we'll, I'll, I'll just jump through what will happen next. So what we'll do is we'll fin finish what's left on the agenda, which would be um, <clears throat> uh, comments from members of the public. But after what will happen after that is, since there's no resolutions, ordinances, because it's a special meeting tonight, we'll go down to other business. We'll move to an executive session for council to discuss the applicants. So if, if you're new to that, you'll have to step out of the building. I mean, you're welcome to sit on the front porch, but it's pretty cold. I would sit in your cars. Um, and once we come out of executive session, we'll come out and let you guys know we're back in regular session, and then we'll uh, council will make its decision. So at this time, it is comments from members of the public. If anybody has anything, they can go to the podium, your name and address, and try to keep it five minutes if possible, please. Am I allowed to ask questions? Uh, I don't see. I guess it, like of the applicants. They're citizens. You can ask them. I don't know if they'll answer you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I think it's fair. I mean, they're trying to be your council member. <laughs> but that's again, that's up to them. I, I'm not telling them they have to answer. Okay. Uh, Brandy Mullet, five two two Hamilton Avenue. Um, I guess I'll start at the top of the list. Um, Amanda, one question that I had for you is, obviously, um, I don't know if you were in here for the first part of the conversation, but I'm a nurse as well. I know the, uh -huh. the struggles that we face in trying to get through school and all of that. Um, what level of involvement have you had in city council and city dealings prior to now? Um, I watched it, so I'm just uh, I tend to watch it on YouTube and just follow it that way. Okay, cool. I do the same thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to butcher your name. I know you said it, and I... Ben. We'll just go with Ben. Ben. Um, I was curious if you would be willing to provide some information about... What specifically do you feel the citizens of New Carlisle need protected against um, in terms of state and federal government regulations? So, uh, you want a specific example? I can, I can speculate on what they're going to try and take away from the city, you know, in the future, but uh, something uh, that recently the, uh, the constitutional governor 
executive orders. Um, Referring to COVID-19? Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you, you feel that the citizens of New Carlisle and a small, small town local government need specific protections against those types and of things? An overreach by, by our state or federal government as our, you know, the Constitution gives that responsibility to small local governments. Okay. It doesn't mean that go between, it gives the Sheriff's Department that ability to do that for their citizens. So um, it's not something that's exercised on a regular basis. Okay. Um, do you have any specific experience with dealing with patients who are diagnosed with COVID-19? Okay. Um, Mr. Cook, all I'm going to say is thank you for your very, very, very many years of dedication and service. You have done this city proud over and over and over again. Your heart has always been in the right place. And I trust, full, fully trust that you have always had the best interest of New Carlisle at heart. Having lived here my whole life, born, raised here, yes, this is my home. I intend to live here a few more years that I have left, and hopefully I can still make a difference. Well, let's hope it's more than just a few years. Um, Peggy, same goes for you. I want to thank you for your service up to this point. Um, it's unfortunate that things kind of shook out the way that they did in, in the petition and getting on the ballot for November, but, you know, I think you've been a good voice of reason. Um, and personally, for, for me, we need more women on council. Um, we, you know, us ladies need some representation. So, um, I, I missed your thank you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Twist that. I didn't, I seriously didn't hear you. I got to get the new job in the works, Dan. I got stuff to do. Um, Miss Graybill. Somewhat recently um, at a council meeting, you were somewhat antagonistic towards Mayor Lowry. And I'm just curious about how, you know, there's seven, seven seats to fill up there. And with the difference of opinions that is going to come up, um, just curious, how do you plan to kind of rein it in? Emotions wise. Huh? Mm -hmm. That's a no. It's not one person, yeah. it's seven people working as a unit. Okay? It's still a compromise and struggle to end and bring things. What's important is to you and what's important to you and what you're willing to negotiate, what you're not willing to negotiate. And I think that that's the issue that we have to deal with. And that's why you have to have a council is uh, also built to be the front of the city, too. And you need, you need that unified front. And you can have struggles in the back. And you know, here when you go to speak in front of council, you don't have struggle in the back. You're right there in front of everyone. So when you have something, you, you speak it right there from the top of it. And so, yeah, I, I'm willing to stand my ground and, and say what's right and what's wrong. And to that, that's who I am. I will always speak my mind. And I don't care if it's just, the most popular opinion will be what's right. You also mentioned, um, obviously, with the state of things, how they've been for the last two plus years, um, that the economy is blundering. And I don't dispute that one bit. However, based on that information, how do you think the city of New Carlisle can entice new businesses to come when everyone is our, I mean. New businesses are still taking off, okay? Um, if you. People are still opening small businesses left and right because they're getting away from wanting to work for other people. Okay? They, you can't depend on having a job working for someone else because those jobs just close up shop. I mean, you you may work in a restaurant today and that restaurant may close up tomorrow because they can't find enough help. So where where does that leave you? But if you open your own place and you run your own business, then you know what you depend on yourself and so you want know those those businesses to flourish and you know we 
New Cornell has the chance to bring those businesses here and possibly some bigger businesses as well. Okay. So this is a statement, not a question. Realistically, um, I don't anticipate that even several small businesses in the city of New Carlisle are going to significantly, that is the key word, significantly impact our tax revenue. At this point in time, the city of New Carlisle is pretty much landlocked. We don't have anywhere that is able to be developed into a large manufacturing type business, case in point, the was it old, old Dominion down there by Wendy's on 235? I mean, we don't have a space like that that is within city limits that we're going to create or draw in some kind of big business that's going to skyrocket our tax revenue. That's just the reality. Um, I completely agree that it cannot be carried on the shoulders of the citizens. We cannot keep jacking up our income tax rates on citizens because people are going to leave. We, I mean. People are already unhappy enough that it's, what, 1.5? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I don't think okay. Um, man, I was on such a roll. I remembered everything I wanted to remember until I got to you, Mr. Chris. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, You're welcome. I don't disagree with your point about, you know, fresh blood, if you will, um, new faces. And I, I agree that for a long time the same folks have been the ones that have stepped up and have filled these roles. Um, respectfully, and no offense to you personally, because I don't know you, I've never met you before in my life, but touching on my previous point, I don't think the city of New Carlisle needs more representation from white males. If we could, I mean, I would love to see a person of color, um, a minority, you know, somebody that is going to represent, and we just don't have that, we just don't have those applicants. We, I think we all would, but we, you know, we can't force them. You know, you know, you can look agree. the water, but you can't make it drink. I know. Um, we, I, we, we've had this conversation, all of us up here have had this. Yeah. We would love um, a, a more diverse council. But um, unfortunately, when you get white males that only apply and the occasional female. Um, I remembered my other point. <laughs> <laughs> so no, this is a good one. This is a good one. So um, I have been on the Parks and Recreation Board since 2017 or 18. I can't remember. Um, we have not had a great success with keeping and retaining members. However, we do have a full board now, and some of the things that you were talking about, like the festival, and you know, we have one, why not do another one, why not do some outreach type things, those are all in the works. Um, so that is definitely something that we are trying to put together with the help of our planning director um, to try to get some outreach going. And if you have any suggestions, tips, tricks, anything, we are more than welcome to hear those from you. That's all I got. Thank you very much, ma'am. Anyone else? Questions, comments, feedback? If I may make a comment. Sir. The comment about not needing representation from any more white males. Our job is to look at the best qualified candidate, not what color they are, what sex they are. That's, in, that's irrelevant. We have to look for the best. The only thing, though, is Dale, that I, it's the best you know, I can candidate, Brandy. I can say with a relative amount of confidence that me being a single white childless female, my values and what I, you know, what I hold dear may or may not align with that of a, I'm not trying to be white male. middle aged or older white male. I'm sorry, but it's just not. That's right, you're middle aged. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Graham. I'm done. Thank you, Ms. Graham. Anyone else? Before we move forward. <laughs> All right, so now we'll drop down new resolutions that ordinance to tie up. We are under the business, so I will need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Mr. Second. So a motion by Mr. Graham, second by Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Vice Mayor, I apologize. Nope. <laughs> the second was Lindsay? All right. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Graham, sorry, yes. Vice Mayor Graham. I'm going to get it. It's going to take a couple meetings. Hey, you will do. <laughs> Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. 
Yes. And Councilman. Yes. Motion to move to executive session. Pass. All right. So we're in motion. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to uh, go back into our regular session. Second. So motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by Mr. Vice Mayor Grimm. All right. Councilman <clears throat> Nowakowski. Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. And Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Motion is accepted 5 0. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll open it up to any council member that would like to make a motion to uh, appoint the candidate so and so to city council. And then they can, you know, he can make a motion for one and so on. There could be three, four motions. And then once you're seconded and we're done, we'll close nominations and then she'll go through the list in order that they were received and call for the vote for each candidate that was uh, nominated. So, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Sir. <clears throat> Uh, I nominate Ben Bond, Bond for the open seat on city council for the duration of the four-year term. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, I thought Linda. Oh. <laughs> so a motion okay. by Mr. Lindsay for Mr. Bond and second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Okay. I would like to nominate Bill Cook. Second. Motion by Ms. Nowakowski. For Bill Cook and second by Mr. Grobel. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I nominate Tom Cress to the second. Open seat City Council. And we'll make sure she's got it. Yeah. Y'all can Grim first, second Lindsay? Yes. Yes. For Mr. Cress. Okay. I didn't mean to step on him. I thought he was done talking. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to nominate Peggy Eggleston for the open council seat. A motion by Mr. Grobel to second. Who do we have so far? Just so I can. Um, we have Mr. Vaughn, Mr. Cook, Mr. Cress, and uh, just, I didn't hear a second for Eggleston yet. Oh, do we have a second? Mr. Eggleston? I'll second it. Okay. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> uh, I move to nominate uh, Samantha, and I'm sorry I forgot her last name. Craybill. Craybill. Cray 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 gray, gray, right? Gray. Like the color gray. gray. Bill. okay. <laughs> I nominate her for the uh, open seat on city council for the expired for the rest of the term. I'll second that. So we've got Vaughn Cook, Chris, Eggleston, Graybill. Right. Anyone else? All right, need a motion to close Mr. nominations. Mayor. Sir, uh, Wait, hold on, did you have something else? Uh, oh, do you have something? I was going to nominate Amanda Platts. Go ahead. Okay. Council. I'll second. Yes. May I ask a question, Mr. Mayor? Sir. Do we nominate everybody, Ms. Burner? Mrs. Burner? Uh, five people? Six? One, six. one, two, three, four, six. Five, yes. six? So they're all five, there. five people? Six. 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 Okay. Yes. And all had seconds? Correct. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move to close nominations. Second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Sorry, I'm just right. calling. <laughs> I'm going to put my coat on here in a minute because I'm freezing. <laughs> okay, so we're going to vote on closing the nominations. Yes, please. Councilman Nowakowski. Quickly. Councilman Roadwell. Closing nominations. Yes. Yes. Councilman yes. Roadwell. <clears throat> Councilman yes. Lee. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Graham. Yes. Motion passes 5 0. Move this along. <laughs> okay, so now we'll go back up to the top and we will start with Mr. Bond. I had a first from Lindsay and a second from Vice Mayor Graham. So we'll start with Councilwoman Nowakowski. No. Okay. Councilman Roadwald. No. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Lowry. Yes. And Councilman Grimm. Yes. All right. So that motion passes three to two. So he takes our first that? vacant seat that passed. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we'll move on for our second. Correct. All right. And I'll go 
down the list. I'll start with Mr. Bill Cook. I had a first from Nowakowski and a second from Roadwall. So I will start with Councilman Lindsay. No. Mayor Lowry. <clears throat> yes. Councilman, Vice Mayor Grimm. No. <laughs> Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. And Councilman Roadwell. Yes. All right, so that is three to two. That motion also passes. All right. And that concludes it. And that would conclude it. So congratulations, Ben and Bill. Um, I heard two paperwork. You have to vote for the rest of the people. No, let it, let, it, field. let it die for lack of motion, basically, or lack of. Because seats are filled. Well, yeah, those seats are just filled. Well, I mean, but yeah, they the, were the all the law here. Just, you have to vote. Let's there, ask him. There are no vacancies left, so. Exactly. I don't understand that. If you had everybody nominated and somebody voted 3 2, what happens if we vote? All of them, and somebody gets a unanimous vote. There's, there's, no, there's nothing to vote on. There's, there's nothing, nothing to vote on. There's no seats left. <laughs> but we didn't get to vote on all of the candidates. I know because the because two have already passed, so there's no there's no other seats to go after. We'll take Jake's advice on this one. Yeah, the seats are already filled. There are no more seats to. Okay, so do you want to bring them both up and read them at the same time or one at a time? Uh, same time is fine. All right. Gentlemen, if you could come up, please. Should be pretty honest. What, wherever's best for you. I mean, uh, I would do it probably here because the camera's probably picking up there okay. the last time. Yeah. I'll be out of the way. Yeah, where are we going? I was going to say, is it that? Yeah, it'll pick up there. Go oh, this way? Yeah. Are you? I'm going to get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Well, okay. So go ahead and raise your right hand and you're going to repeat after me. I'll go slow. Okay. Um, so I'll do it, I, and then you can state your name, and then you can state your name, and then we'll go on together. Sound good? All right, so I, state your name. Ben Vaughn. William Cook. Do hereby solemnly swear. Do hereby solemnly swear. That I shall support the Constitution of the United States. That I shall support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution and laws of the state of Ohio. Constitution and laws of the state of Ohio. And all local ordinances. And all local ordinances. And the charter of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. And the charter of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. I will faithfully. I will faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. And impartially discharge. And impartially discharge. The duties of member of council. The duties of member of council. For the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. For the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. For the term ending December 31st, 2025. The term ending December 31st, 31st, 2025. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. Should be appointed. Correct. To which I have been appointed. I'll change that on this form. Okay. You need to sign those. Yes, please. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Cook. All right. 
All right, so with that being said, we are back in the Arm Ranger session. Uh, we're still under other business. Um, Ms. Nokowski, is there anything you wanted to go over tonight? I would like to submit my resignation effective at the end of the meeting. Okay. And um, so with that being said, this, this whole process will start over again she's announced it but it won't take place till midnight so at the next council meeting is when we will officially announce it publicly i mean obviously you've heard it but uh this, according to our charge and how it plays out so once at our next meeting we'll announce it and we'll start this whole process over again for her seat since she is resigning so um miss nokowski it's been a pleasure to work with you yes. and thank you for your time and knowledge and effort for city council and if I may say something to all those who were not appointed tonight, please go through the process again. Reapply. Some of you. Next. We next had some month. excellent, uh, yeah. excellent uh, applicants this time. I expect to see excellent applicants again next time. You said, sir, can you want to ask? Uh, I would just like to thank Ms. Nalkowski for her service to the city. And uh, I did work with her a little bit uh, in the last term. Anyone else, anything? Ben, do you have anything you wanna to say tonight before we roll? I just appreciate this opportunity and um, to serve and um, do the best that I can. And uh, hopefully we can work together really well. I think we'll be able to. And uh, so I'm very humbled and honored to have this chance. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Cook, anything? I think I will take on Mr. Cobb's job. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to have to call a squad, are we? <laughs> <laughs> Cause trouble. Oh. <laughs> All right. With that being said, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Mr. Weissmuller, second by Mr. Lindsay. All right, Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Rodwell? Yes. And then Councilman Lindsay? Yes. You forgot the other and, two. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll take it. Sorry. <laughs> you right. forgot Mr. Cook. Nope. Nope. Councilman nope. Vaughn? Oh, I'm yes. sorry. And yeah. Councilman Cook. <laughs> she skipped him. I did. I just... We good? We are. Thank you.